Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us. Finding Joy by Ellen Payne is being called an encouraging memoir for anyone who has been sexually abused at any age. An adult coming-of-age story, a coming-to-understand-myself story, told through the voice of Joy growing up in Australia. Her abuse began in childhood and continued into adulthood. Her feelings of sorrow, anger, shame, and frustration her trying to make sense of her life now and how she's thrived and being able now to help others. Ellen Payne is the second of five daughters, born while her father was overseas during war, grew up in the suburbs, married a farmer, which meant adapting to an entirely new culture. Ellen was widowed at 43 with the three children. She's worked in community health and as a minister of religion in rural and remote areas of the United Kingdom and Australia. For over 30 years, working with many survivors of multiple abuses, Ellen's passion to affirm these neglected survivors and encourage them to thrive. Ellen Payne, author of Finding Joy, joining us from Australia on This Week in America. Ellen, welcome to the program. Great to have you with us today. It's great to be with you too, Rick. This is such an important story and such a well-written book that's helping so many people. I mentioned a, a memoir. How difficult was it for you to, to write this story, to share it with others? It was, it was difficult to, to, think, uh, to go through the, the memories as, as I, uh, they came, as I was writing. Um, and that, but it, the, the overwhelming feeling that um, there were so many others um, in, this, in similar situations that have had multiple abuses um, of various kinds. And when all of the focus um, seemed to be on, uh, in, in the community, was on children who'd been abused in institutions and sexually abused as that. Even in that, um, we had a, a Royal Commission here in Australia into the, that sexual abuse and uh, only rarely did they touch on the other physical and emotional and mental abuses that the children um, had uh, survived in also at that time. Yes, and you start the book in talking about that. You're watching television. There's a priest that's being interviewed in the Royal Commission on Child Sexual Abuse, and that, that really resonated with you and has stayed with you through this time. I mentioned this as an adult coming of age story, a coming to understand myself story. And let's focus on a coming to understand myself story. Talk about that process. And do you feel you're, you're fully there or are you still learning things about yourself? Oh, I'm still learning things about <laughs> myself. I guess that will, uh, will go on as long as I, uh, I live. But um, um I've certainly come an enormously long way in the, in the last 30, 40 years or so in that. Yeah, the book is um, Finding that, Joy by Ellen Payne. It's available at bookventure.com in the bookstore, at Amazon as well. You can link onto our website to, and go directly to, to information on the book. So I, I didn't mean to interrupt there. I was I just wanted to mention the, the name of the book, people that are just listening, so they can, they can get information as well. So for, it, it's what, and I think this is true for, for most people going through similar situations, what an ongoing experience where you're still trying to, to sort everything out. Yes. Yes, it's still, um, still trying to sort things out. Um, uh, a woman about 20 years younger than me asked me recently um, how I'd come to the stage of, of forgiving um, my mother. And I, I said, oh, it, it, uh, it took me um, uh, many years. And I think that to give, her, to give herself another 10 to 15 years and um, and she possibly would come to that same point. Let's talk about the abuse, that, the situation that you went through, and you realize this later in life. Uh, talk about the realization and what you went through and, and the long-term impact it's had on who you are. Well, um, it, what came to me in later, later in life was the realization that it was abuse that I'd been through. Um, when I was younger, I just assumed that that's what life was like. Um, um, uh, some of the abuse was by, by my father. The sexual abuse was by my father, and um, and my mother 
uh, knew that that was occurring and um, uh, apparently did nothing. Uh, I didn't find that out until I talked with um, uh, sisters and um, and my mother had said to us, to several of us one uh, at one time, that um, our father was a very passionate man uh, in all senses. And we thought, why on earth did she tell us that? And we think that that was her trying to tell us that she... Um, was aware, and then uh, one of my other sisters said, "Well, of course she was aware um, from from what she she remembered about it." Um, it was it was um, somewhat of a relief to find out that um, that it was uh, wasn't usual behaviour of parents towards children, and. Um, the, the, it's a real dilemma to think that the only um, uh, love and home and what have you that you've had um, is that, has been such an abusive one, and um, and then working out, um, working your way through that to think um, um, how can I be stronger because of this uh, rather than let it um, hold me back any longer in life. In reaching out to people, do you find that many share similar circumstances to what you what you went through? When children are abused by their parents, the question, of course, is where do they go? And many times you hear of them say, I didn't realize this was not normal behavior. I felt maybe this was something that, that happened in, uh, you know, in families. Is that common that you that you hear that from survivors? Yes. Yes, it is. And um, and the. Uh, that then they have they have no idea that uh, they even should tell somebody else or that they could tell somebody. Yes. Hopefully, this younger generation who's getting more um, education about uh, safety for of, for themselves will uh, will uh, be saved from some of that. I think we we see the thing is we are. Uh, um, I presume it's similar in America, but we've had the um, abuse in the churches and we've had, uh, has been spoken of and abuse in um, workplaces and in the Me Too movement and things like that. But still, no one's talked about abuse in the home. And statistics would say that the majority of people are abused by um, family or people known to family. Our guest on the program, yeah, that's a, a frightening statistic, but I've heard that so often, and it's, who do you go to if it's someone within the family? And as a child, it's very difficult to, uh, to understand that this is wrong and I need to tell somebody, but the question becomes, who's that somebody? Ellen Payne, our guest on the program, the book is Finding Joy. It's available at bookventure.com at the bookstore, of course, available at Amazon. Go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and you can link on directly to information on, on Ellen's book. You talk in the book about abuse comes in, in different forms. Talk about abuse that you went through as a child in terms of, of labels that people put on you, names that they called you. And, and you talk a lot about the, the tongue is a, is a potent weapon. Talk about that because really what people, the labels they use, the names they use, that really impacted your life, didn't it? Um, yeah, yes, yes. Um, well, first of all, uh, a tubby child was what the, um, um, some people would label, labeled me as. And, and, and right through um, uh, my life, that has been a, a label that's been put on me. And um, uh, with all of the um, emphasis now on obesity being a... Um, a social problem and, and um, um, uh, people look down on, on, on people who are obese um, and so that's, that's been a, pro a problem. Another one was that I was uh, um, hyperactive and um, of course that, that hyperactive people are always a, a problem in uh, uh, children at schools and, and um, in, um, in trying to make them uh, uh, comply with um, expectations and and behave themselves and and that sort of thing. That were, that also was a problem. 
and um, uh, yes, a, a troublemaker I think was another one that sort of like because because of this uh, hyperactivity. Um, yes, yeah, some some of the even some of the um, labels uh, into my adulthood like uh, wife and and um, widow. Um, a couple of women said to me after I'd been married to after my husband had died that the whole time um, um, I'd been married um, that he'd been alive they'd only ever seen me as his wife and never as who I was for myself uh, until he was uh, no longer there well, you talk and, about um, and, yes go ahead I'm sorry no no uh, that's all thanks well, it's interesting because you talk about value and you, you question at one point what value did Joy have when she apparently caused her parents so much heartache, disappointed her teachers, was a mediocre wife and mother. Talk about the value that we have of ourselves, in this case, value that, uh, that, that Joy had. Was she, in fact, uh, uh, did she cause pain for her parents and heartache, disappoint her teachers, a mediocre wife and mother? Or was that just the perception of how everybody labeled her? Um, I, th- I think um, um, probably one of the things she caused for her parents was frustration because they didn't quite know how to deal with her. And um, certainly people were... were um, my, my school reports um, had year after year could do better if she tried. And I was trying as hard as I could, but <laughs> it was sort of not uh, not getting me anywhere with that. So, um, under the circumstances, yes, those um, uh, that's some of the things that the labels re- restrict you in. Well, you you talk about, and this is interesting. Many things that defined also confine. Talk about that because these labels, they do put you in a box, don't they? Oh yes, well, well um, the, the label that I had after my husband had died of widow was one in particular that um, uh, put me in a box that meant that um, there aren't many wid- people who are widowed in their 40s and so suddenly I found myself being seated at social functions with people in their 80s and and the likes of that and um, and other um, couples not wanting any longer to to have anything to do with me because widows young widows are sometimes seen as a, a threat I mean we've got uh, operas and things like the merry widow that sort of um, um, give the impression that um, and widows are always to blame if, <laughs> if, yes. if um, it, it, yes, so yes, that, um, and, and that that's a problem. the role that that negative role that uh, that labels uh, play. I, something you said that's so important. Uh, the more she says, "Who do I say that I am?" The more complete her life becomes. Talk about that because that's that really acts as sort of of affirmation and. If you look at it that way, suddenly maybe you have value that you sense and you, you feel more in control of your life. Yes, well, um, um, it has been building up over a number of years, but in, in um, probably now about 10 years ago, I came across something called the strengths approach where you looked at, instead of looking at the negatives about yourself, you look at the positives about, uh, you know, what are the assets that I have? And um, oh, uh, that it, 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 it's longer ago than that, though, that I was working in a prison and in a horrific situation with, um, um, uh, where the prisoners had taken a, um, one of the officers hostage. And I thought, nothing in life has prepared me for this. And then suddenly I realised that everything in life, every experience that I had had, was, was there as a strength for me to call on to deal with the situation that I was in in, in uh, being um, chaplain to these people in this situation. And from there that grew this um, uh, until I came across, across this strengths approach and, and was able to see um, much more clearly the strengths that I have um, 
not only from all of the, well, from all of the experiences of the past, but some um, in the negative, what had been seen as negative, like the, the um, hyperactivity, like being able to think out of the side of the box. Finding Are you still there? yes, finding yes. joy is the uh, the name of the book. Ellen Payne is the author and our our guest on the program. Coming to us, we're talking to her by Skype from Australia. A, a couple minutes left in the program. You you say don't give up when the inevitable painful times occur because in the end it will be worth it. Two parts to that: inevitable uh, uh, painful times occur. This is not an easy process. Even if you have some of the answers, is it? You went into this. I, struggling, but but knowing if you stayed with the program, you'd be a better person at at, at the end. Yes, yes, I did, and I think one of the things I, I'm talking about the painful times is that it's when um, um, events occur that bring back memories of the um, of, of the pain of the um, abuse in whatever form it was. And that happens um, not infrequently. I mean, like when when you were listening to um, other forms of abuse being addressed by the by the um, uh, com- community. And, and um, recently, we had uh, the Prime Minister of Australia uh, had a sorry day to say sorry to the victims of child sexual abuse in institutions. And um, that was a sort of a magnificent affair from our, our Parliament House and, and telecast live all around the country. But it was the leader of the opposition um, who actually mentioned that there were other victims of, um, at other, other ages and of other abuses. And um, uh, also one of the things that we, we've uh, done here is go with calling them, uh, calling it violence rather than, than abuse because it actually violates people. Any form of abuse violates the um, integrity of a person. And, um, and so it's, it, it's important in getting that. To, um, abuse seems to speak to, um, it comes from the word use and abuse, and um, use is about what we use things, but yes. we violate people. And so that's um, part of the, uh, the pain when we, we, um, that we experience. The book is so important, and I've got just a minute or so left, but you, at the end of the book, you do helpful suggestions to move towards healing from violence, abuse, and loss. You also have uh, questions for those who may not have experienced abuse, which puts it in focus for people that fall in that category. Helpful suggestions, just give us a couple of these briefly at, at the end that, that will assist people in going through that struggle, the struggle that you went through. I think one of the um, most important things for people who haven't been through abuse have, is about um, listening and, and believing the, the person who's trying to talk to you. Um, inevitably, people who, um, uh, who have experienced abuse of, of, of whatever kind choose very carefully who they're going to disclose it to. And when that person doesn't believe them, that's, that adds to their agony. Um, we've got a court case going on here now where um, somebody in authority has been um, uh, tried for not hearing that story. And the people are, are so angry with him, even more angry, I think, than they were at the abusers, that he didn't hear and he didn't do anything. And so um, uh, that, that I think is the most important thing is, um, is to believe and then to stand beside the person while you, while you make inquiries about the whole thing or, or uh, work out what to do next. 
People can learn so much from the experiences that, that you talk about in the book. The questions, the suggestions at the end will be helpful as well. The book is Finding Joy. The author is Ellen Payne, P-A-Y-N-E. Book available at bookventure.com in the bookstore. You'll find it in Amazon as well. And you can go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and link on directly to information on Ellen's book. Ellen, uh, it's early in the day as we're talking in Australia. I thank you for getting up and being with us on the program. Uh, thank you so much. Great information, a powerful book. Thank you for being with us on the show today. Thank you, Rick. You're uh, welcome. The book, Finding Joy, Ellen Payne is the author and guest. Again, information available at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We're back on today's program after these messages.